This is one test I always like to do on kids who are struggling with tics or repetitive movements. So I'll show you how to test for this so you can test your child at home and then I'll explain what it is that we were actually looking for with that test. Okay, so this is called a go, no go test. And what you're going to do is you're gonna have your hands up like this about eye level with your child and you're going to be able to bring your thumbs up like this. And what you're going to do is you're gonna say, look at my nose, and then when I pop up a thumb, I want you to look at the opposite hand, the one that did not pop up with a thumb. So if I go like this, you'll look here. You'll come back to middle and wait for another one. You might go like this, they'll look here, 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 and you just keep doing that. They have to look at the opposite thumb that popped up. And what we're testing for there is the basal ganglia indirect pathway. So our basal ganglia is basically like a traffic light. It's a red light or a green light for our impulses. The green light is our direct pathway. The red light is our indirect pathway, which is what we were testing for there. We were basically testing for the red light of our basal ganglia. So if we wanna start walking, for example, what happens is our motor cortex asks our basal ganglia if we can begin moving our legs and start walking. So it sends that impulse to the basal ganglia and then the basal ganglia either has to red light or green light it. And if it wants us to start walking, it'll green light it and then we can start moving our legs and walking. But the thing is, is our motor cortex constantly bombards our basal ganglia with requests to move. It might say, can we move our neck? Can we blink our eyes? Can we clear our throat <clears throat> and go like that? So if you picture at all hours of the day, our motor cortex might be going, can we move our neck? Can we move our neck? Can we move our neck? And the basal ganglia, the indirect pathway, that red light has to constantly say, no, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Stay still. But if that indirect pathway, that red light starts to get tired or it starts to not do its job correctly, those impulses might come through of, can I move my neck? Can I move my neck? Can I move my neck? And just one time it might say, yeah, sure, go for it. And then you get that tick or that involuntary movement because that red light did not stop it from happening. So the natural desire of that test is to look at the thumb that pops up, right? So what we have to look at is, is the indirect pathway, is that red light able to stop that process and get our eyes to shift over the other way? If the indirect pathway is not working well, we need to find ways to get it to start working well. And one way is by actually strengthening and further developing the frontal lobe because that's ultimately going to be in charge of the basal ganglia. What we ultimately don't want to do is just mask the symptoms of these tics. We want to get to the underlying cause of why it's happening and then address it from there. We do have a free tics ebook that's available. Our link is either on this video or in the bio, so you can download that and learn more about neurologically based care and how it helps with tics.